Welcome to Oceania. So what we're dealing with in this section is really the islands of the Pacific. So we're looking at Micronesia, Papua New Guinea, New Zealand, Polynesia, Australia, the Marshall Islands, Hawaii, and elsewhere. Now, this area is first going to see human migration uh, back 50,000 years ago. Uh, the Melanesian forebears who will come into Papua New Guinea and Australia. But then we're going to have a massive break uh, where we have the Polynesian forebears coming in, reaching Papua New Guinea around 5000 BC, and then continuing to island hop. And oftentimes they'll island hop into an area and not move much beyond that area for a long period of time. Obviously, it doesn't take 3,500 years to reach Fiji and Tonga. But as they move, they move with purpose. Oftentimes, they get to the point where their population density is threatening the existence of an island, and at that point, they will move on to another island. If you happen to be in an island chain, that's fine. You just go to the next island, uh, which usually you can see. Either you can see the island, or maybe you can see the weather patterns that indicate that there's an island over the horizon in that direction. In other cases, we're not sure how they get to these specific islands. For example, Easter Island, which is uh, incredibly isolated out here in the eastern Pacific. Or north to Hawaii, where there's not much between these islands. And this movement takes place into very modern times. For example, they're only reaching New Zealand uh, around the year 1000, Hawaii around the year 300. I mean, this is the Roman Empire is falling, uh, has passed its height by the time they reach Hawaii. And we're into the medieval period, maybe even into the Gothic, depending on the dating that you use, by the time they make it into New Zealand. The problem is we have no documentary evidence before European explorers. So these migrations are estimates. They could have happened uh, over fairly large sp spans of time. The cultures tend to be particularly diverse. And this diversity is due to migration and isolation. These are island groups. So while you might have some ties between these various islands, for example, within the Polynesian peoples, there may be some commonality. There's going to be a lot of diversity because the people of Cook Island are going to be isolated from Easter Island or from Tonga. Consequently, you get incredible diversity. Then we have the issue of colonization. Now, between the 16th and 19th century, we see the time of discovery, or what's called the time of discovery. This is the period of colonization. The great powers, the great European powers, are going to carve up these islands, lay claim to them, and generally Christianize the people while eliminating the old faith. The problem is... That also means there are no records of the old faith and the old cultures. They're trying to Europeanize these people. By the time we get to the late 20th century, many of these islands are seeking independence, either as groups or individually, depending on the situation. It's far too broad of an area to make a solid generalization there. And we see a mix of hybridization and primitivism. So an interest in the art of the past, as well as mixing ideas of the past with the modern world and mixing the ideas of, for example, the Polynesians with the West. So we see primitivism, we see hybridization. Most of the art we examine will be post-colonial. And there's a reason for that, which is that we are dealing with an oral society, with organic goods. They're creating arts with organic goods, uh, wood, rattan, uh, being two very common materials. 
these materials break down rapidly, so we're not going to be looking at a lot of very early pieces. Also, again, many of those early pieces were destroyed with Christianization because the Christian missionaries would either destroy them directly or demand they be destroyed by the people in a show of faith. This is a big problem because we lose that context. They might be creating a form that they know their ancestors created, but they may not understand why that form was created in the first place, its original origins. So we have this gap in culture that we have a hard time getting around. And with an incomplete early history, the information we can provide on these art pieces is often also incomplete.